Welcome to CA Campus. My name is Sarah DeToy and I am the Management Accounting Lecturer at CA Campus. In this lecture, I will be looking at the calculation of the market value of debt, specifically incorporating Section 24J of the Income Tax Act. In this example, I've given you Siberian Limited. They obtained a loan from Eden Bank on the 1st of January 2015 for an original amount of 1 million rand. The interest rate on the loan is 1% above the current market related rate of 8%. Okay, now this is important because we've been given two different interest rates. The interest rate on the loan is 1% above the market related rate of 8%, which means my interest rate on the loan is going to be 9%. And this market related rate that I've been given of 8%, that is my cost of debt. Now it's important to distinguish between the two because we are going to use the interest on the loan, the 9%, in order to calculate our interest cash flows. And we are going to use the cost of debt when we are calculating our market value. So this is going to be the discount rate when we are calculating our market value. Then we've got the loan capital and interest are repayable in a single bullet payment on the 31st of December 2018. Okay, so that's very important also because during the loan period, you are not going to have any capital or interest payments. So that just means every year interest is going to be capitalized to the outstanding loan balance and everything is going to be repaid in a single bullet payment on the 31st of December 2018. So that is obviously going to be four years later. Then we are told that the loan qualifies as an instrument and is deductible for tax purposes in terms of Section 24J of the Income Tax Act. So this is very important. And then we need to calculate the market value of the loan at the 31st of December 2015. And your dates in these questions are also very important. All right. Now, market value is always just the present value of your future cash flows. So I recommend that you break your calculation down into two steps. First, calculate what your cash flows are. After you know what your cash flows are, you can then work out the present value of those future cash flows, and then you've answered the required and you've got the market value of the loan. All right. So first, let's get our cash flows. So what we're trying to do here is we know that the original loan amount was a million rand. So that would be my present value that I'm going to put into my calculator. We know that N is going to be four years. All of the loan capital and the interest is repayable in a single bullet payment at the end of December 2018. So that is going to be the future value in my calculation. And just be careful, this is going to sound very obvious, but a lot of people at this point have no idea what they should be computing. Some people want to compute payments, some people want to compute future value. If the loan is repayable in equal annual installments, then you're going to compute payments. So payments. If it's in equal annual installments. But in this case, where everything on the loan is repayable at the end of a four year period, then you are calculating your future value. Okay, so we can see there's all of our calculator inputs. The present value at the beginning of January 2015 is 1 million rand. N is going to be 4. We already said our payment is 0 because there's nothing paid on an annual basis. We are going to be computing the future value. And what's very important and a mistake that is often made by students is what interest rate to use when you are calculating your cash flows. Now, if you think about it logically, 
we are trying to work out what this company needs to pay in terms of this loan. What is the interest? What is the capital repayments on this loan? Now, that is going to be linked to the interest rate that you have been given from your bank in your loan agreement. So that is going to be the interest rate of 9%. If the bank has told you that interest on this loan is at 9%, when you're calculating the interest, you should obviously use the 9%. And a mistake that is often made by people is instead of using the 9%, they use the cost of debt, in this example, the 8%. Please do not make that mistake. When you are trying to work out what you need to pay on this loan, you are never going to use the cost of debt or the market-related rate or the interest rate on similar loans because that has got nothing to do with this specific loan. You use the interest rate that you have in your loan agreement with your bank which is the 9% in this question. So I is going to be 9% and we are going to compute our future value. And we know that this future value is now made up of an interest portion and a capital portion, okay? So it's the interest rate on the loan that is used to calculate the cash flows, not the cost of debt. That is very important. And in this step, please note, guys, you are going to ignore tax and transaction costs. So in this question, we didn't have any transaction costs, but if we did, please ignore it. And you can see I also haven't taken tax into account. This rate of 9% over there is before tax. I have not got the rate after tax. Okay, so tax is completely ignored in step one of my calculation. Now at this point, you can either use the amortization function on your calculator, which I recommend, because time is obviously very limited in your tests and in your exams, so you're not going to have time to draw up an amortization schedule. I recommend using your financial calculator. But it is very important to understand the logic of what your financial calculator is actually doing. So this is the logic and this is the amortization schedule. So the loan had a present value of a million rand, the interest rate over the period of the loan is 9%. So I work out interest at 9% of the balance at the beginning of each year. All right. My payments every year we know is zero because they are not paying anything on this loan until the end of the period. And you can see this then ties back to the future value that we calculated on the previous slide. Okay. So this is the logic of what your calculator is doing. You don't need to draw up the amortization schedule. Instead, use the amortization function on your calculator. So make sure you're comfortable with your calculator, you know how to use your calculator properly, because then you do not need to draw up this table. Instead, all of these interest amounts, the accrued interest that we have over here, you can take directly from your financial calculator. Please note further that the interest rate you should be using over here is the yield to maturity. Now, in this question, my yield to maturity is equal to the interest rate on the loan. Okay, the 9%. And that is because the loan is not issued or redeemed at a premium or a discount. So please note, this can get a little bit more complicated if you're, if you're dealing with a debenture, for example, that is issued at a premium or redeemed at a premium or discount, then the yield to maturity will not equal the interest rate on the loan. Then you're first going to have to work out what the yield to maturity is. And once you have the yield to maturity, you use that to work out what your accrued interest is every year. All right, now let's actually go and make sure we answer the required. In terms of the required, we needed to calculate the market value of the loan at the 31st of December 2015. And I said to you that the market value is just the present value of your future cash flows. So that's why we calculated in step one what our cash flows are. We now know what our future cash flows are. In this calculation, we ignored tax and transaction costs. Now we just need to, in step two, when we are actually calculating our market value or the present value of the future cash flows, we now need to include tax and transaction costs in addition to this cash flow that we've calculated in step one. We also need to make sure that we are only looking at future cash flows. Your market value is the present value of future cash flows. So any cash flows that have already occurred in the past 
are not going to be taken into account. And that is why your dates here are extremely important. The company entered into the loan at the beginning of January 2015, but we need to work out the market value at 31 December 2015. So one year of this loan has already passed. So we are only looking at the future cash flows or the remaining three years of the loan, 2016, 2017, and 2018. So that is extremely important if we get to our solution over here. I'm only looking at my future cash flows. All right. We know at the end of 2018, we are going to pay back the interest and the capital on this loan. So that is what we calculated in step one, the interest and the capital. Then we need to take into account tax and transaction costs. There were no transaction costs in this question. So we just need to consider tax. So for tax purposes, guys, we all know SARS is going to give us a tax deduction for the interest, not for the capital repayment on the loan. So your interest is going to be tax deductible. And we were also told in this question that we are using Section 24J of the Income Tax Act, which means you are not going to get the tax deduction when we actually pay the interest. So if we look at this question, we are only paying the interest in the capital at the end of 2018. But you do not get the tax deduction when you pay the interest. Instead, you get the tax deduction as the interest accrues over the period. Okay, so that is extremely important. You're not just getting your tax deduction in 2018 when you actually pay the interest and in capital on the loan, but instead, as the interest accrues over the period, you get that tax deduction. Now, either you can use your amortization schedule, which you have drawn up, or you can use your financial calculator. I recommend using the financial calculator. But this is where your accrued interest is coming from. Okay. Not when you actually pay it right at the end of the period, but instead as the interest accrues over the period. We're not interested in the first period because that is 2015 and that is not a future cash flow. We are only interested in the future cash flows, 2016, 2017, and 2018. So the accrued interest for those periods. Or use your amortization function on your calculator and get what the accrual amount is. Okay, so that is just the accrued interest over the period. We're then going to take that interest amount and we are going to multiply it by 28% so that we can calculate what our tax saving is. Right, and please be careful to present your answer here correctly. This mark is going to be allocated for using the correct tax rate. So please make sure you show your tax rate and also for showing that this is a tax saving. So those cash flows, please, must be positive cash flows. Remember, the company is going to get a tax deduction for the interest. So it's going to reduce the tax that they need to pay across to SARS. It's a tax saving. It's shown as an inflow. All right. Now, also, guys, you must show your calculation of how you got to this interest amount. So either you show your calculation in the form of your amortization schedule, because obviously that's where those interest amounts over there come from. Or if you are using your financial calculator, please just make sure that you show your calculator inputs. So you're going to say, I'm using my financial calculator, I'm using the amortization function in my calculator, and I'm looking for the interest in period two, in period three, and in period four. Okay, remember, not the interest in period one, because that's 2015, and that has already passed. And just show these amounts. Okay, because there is going to be, it's normally about half a mark for each of those. So either show it in your amortization schedule over here, you can get those half marks, or just show your calculator inputs. Never do anything without showing your calculation. All right, so that's our interest every period. We work our 28% on the interest because that is our tax saving. 
we can then calculate what our total cash flows are. And then again, you need to show your calculator steps. So your first cash flow is zero because at the 31st of December 2015, there is nothing because that is a past cash flow. We only look at future cash flows. Then you look at your cash flow for 2016, 2017, and 2018. Input all of these cash flows there into your calculator. So what's extremely important is where we are calculating the market value because now we are answering the required. It is the present value of my future cash flows, my market value. I then use my market related rates. Okay, or my cost of debt. But your cost of debt must be the cost of debt after tax. These cash flows over here are after tax. So your discount rate or your cost of debt must also be after tax. Now remember the cost of debt was the market related rate. So not the interest rate on the loan of 9%, but the market related rate of 8%. So you take the market related rate of 8% and you work out what that is after tax. You use the market related rate to calculate the market value and we use the interest rate on the loan, the 9% in order to calculate our cash flows or the interest cash flow. All right, so input all of that into your calculator and you've then answered the required and you've calculated the market value. So remember where this could come in is if you need to calculate the weighted average cost of capital and you need to know what the market value of the loan is to do your weighting, this is how you calculate the market value of the loan, including the effect of Section 24J of the Income Tax 